Hey there. Hi there, ho there. You know, it just recently occurred to me how similar my super simple opening tagline is to the introduction of the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> but uh, more than coincidence, uh, there's nothing Mickey Mouse about this because today I've got a Robeson scout knife to show you in strawberry bone. But first, as I often do, I want to give you a little background on Robeson before I pick up the knife and we look at that. Uh, you might be familiar with Robeson, but it was one of those early American pocket knife makers. They were established in 1894, and the name was around until 1977. They were founded by Millard Robeson, and he quickly moved their operations to uh, Rochester, New York in 1898, set up a plant there. But he died in 1903, so he he wasn't really around to run his own firm for very long, and the firm did not actually prosper until all the way out to 1940, when Emerson Case, of the famous Case Knife family, was hired as general manager to run Robeson Knives. And he poured his heart and soul into it, and he put in incredible hours, worked very hard, and brought the company back up, and made it uh, very successful. Uh, he later became president. So like in 1964, I believe it was, Robeson was acquired by Cutler Federal. And they asked Emerson Case to stay on one more year to help with the transition, which he did. So he retired in like 1965. And um, at that time, they quit making their own knives. All their knives from that time forward were contracted and made by Camillus. And then later, in like 1974, Ontario Knife bought the Robeson name and they continue using that trademark. Um, until it was retired. So I think at that time, Ontario also owned Queen, so you can see some Queen knives that have the ropes and name. Uh, other ropes and trademarks you may be familiar with will be like Pocket Ease, Sure Edge, and Premier. But they were always known for using uh, top quality materials. They've got a very high collectability rating. And the coolest thing about this Scout knife is the bone covers. This is the famous strawberry red bone of Robeson. Now, when they first started, their earliest bone scales were green, uh, and then they were brown. But about 1945, after Emerson Case came on, they started using this strawberry bone. And um, no one else has ever really been able to duplicate this. In 1960, they dropped the bone, sadly, and uh, replaced it with red plastic. Uh, so you can see these, um, you know, Delrin red strawberry uh, handles. But they just don't look as good. Um, you know, they, they, they tried to copy it, but you know, it just doesn't look as good. So this is a really interesting scouter utility knife in a lot of other ways. And uh, let me just show you, first of all, of course, the, the gorgeous strawberry bone covers inlaid with a Robeson nickel silver shield, three visible pins. Uh, this one, does, front one here does have a tight crack running from here to the shield and uh, a little crack underneath the center pin there. I don't know what's going on with that center pin. Um, this knife may have been repaired at one time. I would hope that it didn't leave um, the Robeson factory looking like that. And the crack on the pin might indicate somebody was, you know, hammering on it. Looks really good in the back. But otherwise, the knife looked perfectly okay. You can see there's a uh, sunken pin here um, in the back bolster. I did that. Um, I had to slacken the screwdriver. I, I couldn't really even get it open. It was so tight and it wouldn't snap. So I did slacken that a little bit, and that's always a risk you run that you pull the pin in a little bit. So I'm responsible for that. But now that I can at least get the screwdriver out and, and it snaps. But this is an interesting knife. Um, it's carbon steel, brass liners and spacers there, nickel silver, silver bolsters, a uh, detachable bail. But the tools are pretty cool. Let me show you the main blade first. It's a spear point blade, of course, like all these seem to be, with a long nail pull. It's an interesting nail pull, too, because it's uh, flared out at the end. See how they taper the end of their cut there? It's very interesting. Uh, this blade was badly ground by someone who did not know how to sharpen a knife. See that? <laughs> Yours truly has put a razor sharp edge on it and cleaned it up a little bit. Here's the tang stamp 
It's Robeson Sure Edge USA. And then let's look at the can opener. This is a really interesting can opener. It's kind of a can opener cap lifter. It's a multifunction tool. And as you can see there, I can lift a cap and it does have a sharpened edge here for opening a can. Here is the pull for it. And it's kind of interesting because it's got a head and a shank. It looks kind of like the head of a nail. Which really makes it quite uncomfortable to open because when you put your nail under there, it really just digs down into the quick of your nail. Very uncomfortable to open. I don't know what they were thinking when they did that. Um, because to me it looks like a can opener that you work like this, you know. Maybe moving uh, forward or, or I'm not sure, backward with it. But it could be possible that that's your cap lifter alone and what they want you to do here is uh, stick it in and open the can this way with this serving to lip over, hook over the lip of the can. I'll have to try that, but I'm not real keen on breaking that off, of course. So that's an interesting tool. It's a little different than what you usually see. And um, here is the tight screwdriver. I want to show you that. But I need this tool for it. Thank you, Joe at Messer HQ for the really nice GEC cap lifter, tube popper, and nail nick tool. Messer HQ, the second best knife channel on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. So we're going to get that open with this great little tool. And you can hear that gator snap there. Again, you've got a long nail pull. This is really odd here, though. On the hardest to, opening, hardest to open tool, they have that thing just tapering out. So out where you need to leverage the most, it's the shallowest. It's very strange. As you can see, it's just a straight up screwdriver. Cap lifter being on the can opener. On some of these I've seen, this edge is a file, which is a great idea. Unfortunately, on this one, I don't get a file. And let's see what haven't we looked at, the punch. So it's a nice full punch, nothing broken, comes all the way down to the tip. And it has a little interesting style here on the back. Again, that angled long nail nick, angled at the ends. And then you have a groove here for cutting, reaming or scraping. So a very different looking knife, not only in the bone scales, but in the function and form of the tools. Well, one thing I wanted to show you on the main blade, I knew I was forgetting something. On the back is the pattern number. And Robeson had like one of the best numbering systems out there. And so let's just go through it real quick. The first number uh, indicated the handle material. I think there were like uh, nine different handle materials and this one, six, was bone. Next number four is the number of blades. The next number uh, would indicate the composition of the liners and bolsters. And so brass and nickel silver could have either been two or six. And in this case, it's uh, two. And then the remaining numbers are your pattern numbers. So this is uh, pattern 214 for Robeson. So these old Robesons, these vintage Robesons with the real strawberry bone handles uh, are generally assumed to come from 1950, you know, the late 1940s, the 1950s. And maybe that's why I like it so much. Yours truly is from the 1950s. So this fits in really well with my collection of other vintage non-official scout knives. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just round those up and we'll take a look at all of them real quick and put this in its place. All right. So here in no particular order are my uh, rarer non-official scout knives. And I'll be quick about this, I promise. Here is an older case with the long... C, long tail C, case tested, scout knife with the scout badge, threaded bolsters, green bone scales, all nickel silver, big honking knife, really cool. Uh, here's my New York Knife Company Buffalo Bill knife. So I don't know why they put a likeness of 
Jebediah Springfield from The Simpsons on there. <laughs> that was an observation by Knife Tex, which I thought was just so funny. And here's my Cataragus, Cataragus, the knife with the compass. First knife to have a compass. First knife like this, I guess, to have a compass and a very interesting tool. Very cool knife. Here is a Remington UMC camp knife. They called this their camp knife. Uh, it has a pattern number. It escapes me right now, but it was modeled after the legendary Boker Sports Messer. Just as high quality. Here's a, a Boker USA Scout Knife which is a great tight little knife. I've not done a video on that yet, but I will soon. Uh, here's a Union Cutlery K-Bar. This one's just got a great blade. Big bold swedge, long nail pull, match striker, and a gaslight key and screwdriver. Very great, very cool celluloid handles. Uh, this is a Remington Junior Scout in the flag pattern. Beautiful little knife, pinched bolsters, all nickel silver. Here is my Schrade Walden 906, the All-American Army Officer's Knife. I almost did the quote symbols again. If you do that twice in one video, you uh, get kicked off of YouTube. This one has the third layer with the can piercer. Here's the harder to find 900 without the third layer in the can piercer. It's actually much rarer. Here's a John Primble Belknap Scout Knife, which is just a gorgeous, high-quality knife. And was actually made by Boker USA. And so now we can put the uh, Robeson Scout with the beautiful strawberry bone covers in that group. I guess we'll just squeeze it in over here. And I'm going to continue to look for rare and different vintage scout knives and those type of knives, but I think I'm going to be kind of backing off the uh, vintage hunt a little bit. I'll maybe feature some newer knives on the channel. Uh, you guys tell me what you think, um, but I think I might concentrate maybe on just harder to find newer knives from U.S. manufacturers because I think U.S. knife makers need our support, need all the help they can get. Maybe knives that are you know discontinued or limited editions, things like that, that, that have some collectability to them. And I've got some other great things too coming down the, uh, the pike on the channel for as far as vintage and, and that interest. So stay tuned, keep watching. As always, I really do appreciate your viewership and have fun collecting. <laughs>